Hello viewers. In this video, we will continue with our series of uh, a series on finding the range of function. So in my last video, we discussed this first category, uh, the category A. Uh, so in this video, we'll be looking uh, more for the category B. So we'll select some few questions here. Let's start with these problems. So here we have to find the range of the function, uh, just like I did in my last video. Uh, I'll still go ahead to find the domain. So let's get the domain of this function first. Now, this is a rational function. So the domain it will be all the real numbers, except what? Except the zero of the denominator. And the zero of the denominator is what? Is three. So the domain is going to be the whole real number. So minus infinity to three, then union three to infinity. So for the range, <laughs> now for the range, what do we need to do? You see, we are in this category. So we need to solve for what? We solve for x in terms of y. Then find the domain, which is now the range. So solve for x in terms of y. So we're going to have y is equals to x plus 2 over x minus 3. We want to solve for x. If you cross multiply, you have this. Right? And here we can we can expand. So you have xy minus 3y is equals to x plus 2. And uh, we try to put the x together. So this will become xy minus x, which will be 2 plus what? 3y. And here we can take a common factor of x so that we have y minus 1 is equals to 2 plus a 3y. So what does this mean? This means that x is going to be 2 plus 3y all over what? y minus 1. Okay, so this is what we have. Now, we need to find the domain of this function. So the domain of this function will be the range. And as you can see, the domain of this function is the whole R, except 1. Because 1 will make the denominator here to be 0. So it means the range, you know, the domain of this function Remember, this function is terms of x. It's now the range, so it will be from minus infinity to 1, union 1 to infinity. So this is the range. Now, number 2. If you look at number 2, um, this is a polynomial, so the domain is the whole of R. To so find the range, we also need to solve for what? We need to solve for x in terms of y. But to do that now, you see that, just see that this your y, we can rewrite it as what? This is x plus 1, all what? All squared. And so, it means that we can solve for x easily by taking the we can see that x plus 1 is equal to what? We can say this, right? So what is x? Minus. 
minus 1. Okay, here we now need to find the domain of this one. That will be the range. So, uh, let me start from here. This is the range. How to find the range. Okay, so, and what is the domain of this now? The domain of this, you can see that this is an even root. So it means this y should be greater than 0. And that will be the range. It will be y greater or equals to what? 0. So which will be 0 to infinity. Okay, so let's see question three and four. So for question number three, we're to find the range of this. Now, what do we know about the domain? The domain is the whole R. Since we have what? An odd root. If you have an odd root, the domain is usually the whole R. Because X can be positive, it can be negative, it can be zero. Then to, to find the range, you have to solve for X in terms of Y. So this is now to find the range. We said Y is equals to the cube root of 2X plus 5. Uh, so we can cube both sides. So you have Y cubed is equals to what? 2x plus 5. Uh, we can say that 2x is nothing but y cubed minus 5. And therefore, x is what? y cubed minus 5 over what? Over 2. And so in this situation, you see that... Uh, x is just going to be what y cube over 2 minus 5 over what over 2 so this is a polynomial the domain of this polynomial is what is the whole r so it means the range is still going to be the whole r Okay, number four. Number four is still a polynomial, so we know that the domain is still the whole R. Then to find the range, we do the same by trying to solve for x in terms of y. But for this problem, unlike in the first case, we were able to write it easily as a perfect square. x squared plus 2x plus 1 is a perfect square, right? This one. We were able to write it this one easily. Okay? But if you look at what we have now, it's this is x squared plus 2x plus 3. So this, we, we need to do some completing the square. Okay, let me write it here again. This is x squared plus what? 2x plus 3. Now, how do we do completing the square? We take half of the coefficient of x. So this is x squared plus 2x. What is the half of the coefficient? Is 1. So we add 1 square, right? Now, usually you add it on the other side, right? But here you can what? You can subtract it. So it's still the same. It's just like you're adding one, you're subtracting one. You remember here you are not solving an equation. So um, we're doing the completing the square just on one side. So look at this. Then from here to here is nothing but what? X plus one, all what? Squared right so what do we have left we have this is minus one 
plus what? Plus a 3. So this, it means our y is nothing but x plus 1 square, and you have minus 1 plus 3, which will be plus 2. So with this, we can transfer this easily so that you have y minus 2, it's equals to x plus 1 squared. And now you can say that what x plus 1 is nothing but, you take the square root, so you have square root of y minus what? Minus 2. Then we can say that x is what? plus minus root y minus 2, then I think minus 1. Okay, we're almost done. Now, we need to find the domain of this function. But look at this function now. This function turns out to be what? An even root. So we know the domain is that this has to be what? the content of the even root has to be positive. But that domain now is actually our range, right? So it will be what? That y minus 2 should be greater or equals to 0. And that simply means that what? And this means that y is greater or equals to 2. So our range is from 2 to infinity. All right, um, so I hope this video is clear. So watch out for the next video on range. Thank you for watching.